It's that time once again. It is time for a wrestling pay-per-view. This time, All Elite Wrestling Revolution. So, I'm going to break it down. My triple shot. What I think will happen. What I want to happen. And my wild card pick. But before I do that, let me remind you about the link in the description of the video. That link will take you to Indiegogo, where you can back my 68-page graphic novel, Everlasting Survivors, Volume 1, all day long. This is its second chance to find an audience. The channel has grown. There are many more subscribers than the first time. And there are many more options now. There's a Gamble Comics hat. There's an Everlasting Survivors t-shirt. There are two poster options. There are five cover options. There are all kinds of things for any version of fan that is out there. A person who's never read the story or a person who picked up Everlasting Survivors Volume 1 on the first campaign but now wants to support with some of the merch. Everybody who picks up an order gets a complimentary Gamble Comics sticker along with whatever they purchase. So, um, click the link in the description. Head to Indiegogo and pick up your copy of Everlasting Survivors Volume 1 all day long or, you know, some of the Gamble Comics stuff. And uh, after the open, I'll break it down. What I think will happen, what I want to happen, and my wild card pick for AEW Revolution. When it comes to what I think will happen at AEW Revolution 2023, it doesn't go any further than Wardlow defeating Samoa Joe for the TNT Championship. Uh, as you may be clear from the open, I am a fan of Wardlow. I also love Samoa Joe, but the thing is, with Ring of Honor returning as of this week, I think... ROH will be the primary home of Samoa Joe, especially building up to Supercard of Honor, where Samoa Joe will be defending the Ring of Honor Television Championship. And, subsequently, after Wardlow wins the TNT title at the pay-per-view revolution, I do believe that it would be smart if, after a long struggle a challenging match, and a lot of effort put in by both men, Samoa Joe and Wardlow, Will Hobbs, powerhouse Hobbs, comes out with his uh, victory in the face of the Revolution ladder match from this past Dynamite and confronts Wardlow. And while confronting him, basically goads him into agreeing to defend the title here and now due to the fact that I think it would hurt Wardlow less if he loses the title on the night that he won it, as opposed to waiting until Wednesday and either defeating Powerhouse Hobbs and then continuing the streak of the Face of the Revolution ladder match being for nothing because the winner doesn't win the title, or going to Wednesday having Wardlow lose after having time to recuperate. So I think that by having this almost Money in the Bank-esque style cash-in, if you will, at the pay-per-view itself, I think it would benefit both men. Uh, it benefits Powerhouse Hobbs because it gets him the TNT title for the first time in his career. And it benefits Wardlow because it protects him from looking as though um, it was a fair fight. And since he is the good guy in this scenario... I think that it would be very good for him to uh, have that cushion, that extra caution around this loss. And his, his loss, while I do believe it is 
good and helpful for Powerhouse is actually to set up for him to be the one to dethrone Maxwell Jacob Friedman by year's end. And on the subject of Maxwell Jacob Friedman, the current All Elite Wrestling World Champion, that transitions us perfectly into what I want to see happen here at AEW Revolution. And when it comes to what I want, what I want more than anything is, <laughs> well, I want for there to be a very interesting and unexpected conclusion to the 60-minute Iron Man match between Brian Danielson and MJF for the World Championship. And um, if both men are going into the finish of the hour-long tied up um, with the number of falls, I think that it would be interesting if MJF won the Iron Man match, the match that is supposed to prove that Brian Danielson is the superior wrestler over MJF. I would like it if MJF won the match in such a fashion as to prove that he is an intelligent um, figure. And in by doing so, I would like to see his mentor, or mentor is probably too strong a word, his, uh, his idol, yeah, I like that one better, his idol of CM Punk get involved in the match uh, toward the conclusion. As a matter of fact, I think it could be smart if MJF um, gets struck by CM Punk toward the climax of the match. Um, maybe a running knee, a clothesline, uh, any physicality would do the trick. Because what I would like is for MJF to win the final fall of the Iron Man match via disqualification, where Brian gets disqualified because it appears as though CM Punk has helped him by attacking MJF. While the bell rings, Brian then confronts Punk because Brian knows he didn't want any help from CM Punk. He didn't need any help from CM Punk. And in this moment, that's when it is revealed to the audience uh, by Punk attacking Brian that, well, it's not immediately revealed. Um, after Punk attacks Brian, MJF should pull Punk off of Brian they should do a face-to-face -face stare down, both angered faces. MJF, I think, it, if Punk pushes MJF, then after Punk shoves MJF away, that's when MJF's arm should go out, almost as though he's offended from being touched by Punk, only for them to embrace and for it to be revealed to the audience that CM Punk is intentionally got Brian Danielson disqualified and gifted the title to MJF. The, the reason I'm going this route, it is a, uh, in my mind, it'll be a callback to MJF wearing the devil mask out and all of the, the former promos they did in their dog collar match where MJF mirrored CM Punk's promo where he, he told the world that the greatest lie the devil ever pulled was, or trick the devil ever pulled was uh, fooling you into believing he didn't exist. And MJF retorted that back to Punk. So in my mind, instead of them being, well, yes, they will play the role of the two-man power trip where Triple H and Stone Cold Steve Austin worked together on top. However, instead of them being called the two-man power trip, I would like for them to be referred to both by Shivani and by themselves even is by uh, the concept of saying it's true that the devil has more than one face. You know, it's long been said that the devil has more than one name, Lucifer, the devil, the fallen, all kinds of things. But in this uh, 
idea of mine, this thing that I want. I want for them to I want for them to lean into the fact that both men are despised, both men are cancers on the wrestling business, if you will. And actually they, they should lean into that, talk about themselves in that way. And um in an effort to protect uh powerhouse Hobbs, who just won the TNT title that I, I had in the prior what I think should happen. I would like for CM Punk to be the man to end Orange Cassidy's undefeated streak with the All Atlantic title and for CM Punk to win that belt. Reason being is A, uh, Orange Cassidy is very, very popular. B, it'll get CM Punk booed out of the building. And then also, if Punk gets hurt and can't defend it, the All Atlantic title isn't the end all be all like it was when he was the world champion, twice over getting hurt and having to give it up. Um, the final step in this making these guys the the modern day AEW equivalent of the two man power trip is I would like to see um, FTR be the team that dethrones dethrones the guns instead of it being anybody they're defending against at Revolution and then have well it can work one of two ways either you'd go all in on the uh, you go all in on the two-man power trip version of CM Punk and MJF and have them dethrone FTR for the tag titles, or you could bring this super group together of three of the former members of the Pinnacle and Punk and FTR, who we all know are actual friends. It might be better to bring the group together and have FTR work you know, on the villain side, but either which way, there are an abundance of options on ways to make this work. And I think that um, CM Punk leaning into what Mark Henry has said about him being willing to mentor people and for MJF and CM Punk to lean into the idea that they are both bad for wrestling, it could make for compelling television. And then also uh, just thinking about the person that could go after... CM Punk in the All Atlantic title. Well, first, you got Takeshka, who a lot of people are high on right now. So, you know, that way you get the uh, the international flavor. But another person I think could be great, especially going into pay-per-view, could be Adam Cole, because he is freshly uh, minted into a good guy after his recent concussion issues. So uh, what I want to see happen is for MJF to help M, uh, or what I want to see happen is CM Punk help MJF retain the world championship and go on a crazy long run as a dastardly duo and potentially a crazy quartet of uh, uh, bad guys. Last and finally, it brings us to my wild card pick for AEW Revolution, and that one is... Uh, well, this idea is for the women's championship match. After Jamie Hayter retains her championship over Ruby Soho and Soraya, I would like for Jamie Hayter not to know if Soho will take the side of Soraya and Tony Storm, only for Ruby Soho to leave the, the ringside area and not take anybody's side. And so that leaves Soraya and Storm in a two-on-three situation with Jamie Hayter, Britt Baker, and Rebel. And so it seems like that the two freelancers, as they're calling themselves in Storm and Soraya, are outnumbered by the the the, the good girls, <laughs> or the, the, the ones the fans are cheering right now with Hayter, Baker, and Rebel. Only for... Soraya and Storm to reveal they didn't need Ruby Soho at all and for Mercedes Monet to make her debut at the pay-per-view and help the freelancers take out the champion and for Mercedes to hold up both the IWGP Women's Championship and the AEW Women's World title and this would be a good tease toward what would make for a 
smart match to have happen at Forbidden Door 2 later on this year. Thank you for tuning in to this AEW Revolution 2023 triple shot. I appreciate you uh, being here. Come back to the channel on Monday for our All or Nothing for the Rocky and Creed franchise. Come back on Wednesday for Limitless Episode 11. We're halfway to the finish line of Limitless TV series. And then uh, come back next Friday for an update on my Indiegogo campaign, the second chance for Everlasting Survivors to find an audience. Thank you. Later.